It's a Jim and Jen podcast. Two friends laughing <laughs> at everyday life. <laughs> we had to, we had to do this twice. That little that part right there, because for some reason I looked down, and I drooled on my paper. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know how you did that. With, with six words, I drooled on my paper. And... <laughs> That's classic. That's I have no guy. idea. Hey, so this morning, uh, it's kind of, a, I don't know, mostly Christmas theme for the podcast this yes. morning, since we're doing this a couple of days before Christmas. Uh, I do have a, um, a would you rather Christmas theme. Okay. Would you rather uh, <laughs> coming up. And uh, you are, uh, you've moved your home base today because you're usually in, in the Cleveland area and I'm usually in the St. Louis area. I'm currently in a closet in Minneapolis. <laughs> it's your brother's house in a closet. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't you like that? I get treated so well here. Well, yeah, that's the thing. When you go traveling for family vacations or family holidays, it's like they put you wherever they can find you. And, yes. And now, granted, you're in there so you can record and have that space, but you end up on the oddest beds. In, uh, you know, some people are sleeping on, I've been to family vacations and it's like, okay, you guys are going to be on the sofa cushions on the floor, and then someone else is going to be on the sofa that had the cushions. You sleep on that. Right. I'm on an air mattress, a blow-up air mattress, inside the man cave. Oh, the man cave. Which I have stacks of wrapped gifts all around me, and my suitcase <laughs> barely fits in there, let alone me. <laughs> what, what's the coolest thing in the man cave? I don't have a man cave, oh, but gosh. I know some people have some really sweet things. Like, we were looking at a house once when, when we moved to, oh, I think we were moving to Tulsa at that time, and... We went up and you go through this little teeny door that was a little bit smaller than the other ones because you had to be special to get in there. So mm -hmm. I guess the, the owner was small. And he had a putting green in there, raised up, putting green. And so you stepped up on the putting green and you you know tapped the ball in and that was, that was part of his man cave. Okay, he doesn't have anything like that, but we are an Ohio State family and he's also big into the Pittsburgh Penguins. So it's decked out in Ohio State, Pittsburgh Penguins. I swear my brother has more mem memorabilia than anybody else I've ever met. Like when the Ohio State Stadium got torn down the bleachers he's got a section of the bleachers in his man cave oh, i like that yeah so he's got a big screen tv like ginormous he's got like five or six different video game systems All right, so here's what you need to do since he's such a freak about ohio state and and penguins as well uh-huh take some of his things it's just to mess with him on christmas day take some small things that he has wrap them up and start giving them to his presents and see how long it takes him before he goes but i have this already Wait, oh, wait, you end up taking it from my room. <laughs> He'll be like trying to be all nice and polite by, by not mentioning that he already has one or two or three of them. By the fourth or fifth one, he goes, wait a minute. Wait. A minute. I should do that. You know what? I wonder if I could have gotten away with not buying him a gift and just doing that yeah. now that you mention it. He probably doesn't know half the stuff he has in there. He's oh, I promise you he doesn't. Do it. I promise you he doesn't. I will. I'll, let, I'll do it and I'll let you know what he says. Report back. Please. I will, for my son, sure. My son's wanting to uh, come. I shouldn't say this too loud because he's outside the room and his sister might be out there too. But he wants to do a gift, like a goofy gift for his sister and have her go on mm -hmm. uh, like a treasure hunt through the house. That's fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I hope he uh, you know, doesn't decide to, you know, today, go, I don't know if I want to put all that together. I hope so because those are fun to do. The, uh, so I don't even know how to start putting something like that together. Well, you kind of have to decide if you want to do – uh, riddles or clues, you know, it's like the, they open up a present under the tree and it says, okay, we're going to go through a scavenger hunt, you know, and mm -hmm. you'll get a clue at every stop. So your first clue is it sharpens knives. So you go over mm -hmm. to the knife sharpener and be tape behind it. There'll be another clue that says, you know, your next clue is dad goes there to read for a long time. And you decide, is that the man cave or is that the bathroom? Well, it's probably the bathroom. And so you, <laughs> you go in there and you find a, a, another note that says your next clue. And yeah, you go through that or you can do rhymes or poems or whatever. And then the last one, they finally find where their present is. Oh, that's cool. Yes. That's a really cute idea. I'm too lazy to do that, but that's a really cute idea. <laughs> Here's another really cool way to give gifts. Our friends do this. Uh, I, I, I would love to, but uh, like you say, it might be a lot of work. They have one big gift per kid. So they have three kids. And mm -hmm. the, the big gifts are usually in the same room, but to the to the, each gift, they attach a piece of yarn, a different color yarn to each one. And then the, they proceed to take those pieces of yarn all over the house, intertwining them between each other, up the stairs, down the stairs, through the kitchen, under the chairs, and then they all end up at the Christmas tree. So you've got this okay. massive spider web of three colors of yarn. And the kids simply have to then follow their yarn to get to their present. And so now they're oh. playing almost Twister. It's almost like a three-dimensional Twister at that point. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Again, a lot of work, but very cool. That's why I don't, I don't do that one. It's, it's not my thing. Hey, speaking of work, 
I uh, I saw on your Facebook page that you had to hitchhike <laughs> to get gas because you ran out of gas. A grown woman running out of gas. You're not supposed to. That's something you do when you're 20. So here's the deal. My I was in a car accident and I was rear-ended by two people. At the same right and, at the same time? This isn't like a previous yeah. oh, no, no, this is like a three it was a three car accident. I was the front car. So person hit me, somebody else rear-ended them, pushed them further into me, right? And uh, so my car's been in the shop, so I've got this rental car. And I drive a convertible. And I know exactly how many miles when it when the last, you know, gas gauge goes down or the gas light comes on. I know exactly how many miles I have to go. It came on in this SUV that I'm not used to driving when I left the house in the morning to go to work. And round trip, it's 12 miles. So I thought for sure I would have 12 miles round trip. Mm -mm, didn't. Did not. But I will tell you, I got super lucky in more ways than one. So on my way home from work, it goes. And at first, I'm like, oh, my God, what's wrong with the car? Because they've never run out of gas. The car just starts slowing down. Oh, that's your first. Oh, like, yeah. You all of a sudden, st you have no power and you're pushing the pedal. Yeah. And then it's like, what's yeah. going on? So, Stop. yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. So, it totally freaked me out. And I'm on one of the busiest roads. People go to like 50 and 60 down this road. And it's a four lane road and all this stuff. Or maybe I only go 50 and 60 down the road because the speed limit technically is like 35 or so something. So, you're the one but... going 50 or 60. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember in our last episode of the podcast, you talked about getting pulled over by the guy that you first kissed that's right so that's i'm thinking right. possibly it was you going 50 or 60 and you're like <laughs> why is everyone going me. so slow <laughs> that's typically how that works yes <laughs> so um anyways i see the gas station coming up i'm like if i can just make or not the gas station the fire station coming up if i can just make it to the fire station so i literally coast into the fire station and it parks itself right there and i'm like Oh, God, shine down. So I go and I ring the doorbell at the fire station. Three hot firemen come out to help me. Hot. <laughs> I'm like, the Christmas spirit is with me. It lands me in a safe place and delivers hot firemen Did all you ask in uniform. If you could just take pictures of them. <laughs> hey, hang on. I want you to lounge on top really... of the hood of my car so I can take a picture of you. Oh, you know what? I should have. I should have. That would have been a great Christmas gift for my friends. Now, are, are they truly hot or were they just firemen and men in uniform? Because my cousin, my cousin married a fireman and he posted a picture of what real firemen look like. And so there's his entire company and they're just in their skivvies holding fire helmets in appropriate places and hoses in appropriate places. And, you know, they're not the finest specimen of physical man. They're men. They're tubby. They're lumpy. They're not cut. Really? No. He says this is what real well, firemen Well, these guys were like. – okay, so these firemen were fully clothed. But I will tell you, at least two of them I would have been more than happy to go out on a date with, okay? <laughs> they heated you up. Because <laughs> they were very good looking. So why didn't you ask them out? Honestly, I was I was uh, heading home to grab my suitcase and catch my flight, and I was a little concerned if I stayed in Florida, I might miss my flight. <laughs> so here's what you do: you go back and you take an apple pie to him when you get back, and say thank you so much for rescuing me. I really appreciate it. And you know what? This is an awfully big pie, and I happen to have two forks. Maybe you'd like to share it. Ah, there you go. There you go. Why not just take some Christmas cookies? Yeah, you can take some Christmas cookies, too. They're probably easier. And besides, you could probably steal some from your brother's house and you don't yes. have to make a bed. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. But that doesn't sound as good when you go up, hey, listen, I stole these from my sister-in-law who made them. So you want to have some cookies together? You don't tell them. I claim I made them. It's just one of those little white lies you tell. <laughs> It's like it's like when you have to go to a potluck yeah. or a barbecue and everybody has to bring a dish. Doesn't everybody do this? You go to the grocery store, you buy something that you think you can set up to look like it's homemade and dump it over into your own container and be like, look, I did this great job. Hmm. You don't it's do like that. that. You're that person because we all go to potlucks after person. making all the spending all this time working on on making our bean casserole or sweet potato, whatever. And we're like, oh, I'm who's a person. person that brought that that is obviously store bought? No, you gotta find this kind that's not good store bought. Like you gotta bring like buffalo chicken dip, something in the container that you stick it in your own crock pot. You heat up, you then people totally think it's yours. Yeah, this firefighter. And see. then they ask you for the recipe, so you have to have like this recipe memorized off the top of your head that you know you would make, but you really won't. That sounds like too much work. Just make it. Just make it yourself. That sounds like a lot of work. Hey, I have I have a, a very quick note for you, Miss. I ran out of gas. Since uh -huh. since you are the only person who really hasn't seen Star Wars out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even before we started this, you you had your uh, your nephew Graham come in, and we were skyping together, and and we're talking about Christmas, and he has on a, a stormtrooper's shirt. I'm like, wow, look, yes, he, he knows about Star Wars. 
His aunt oh, st- is like Star Wars is here. Clueless. So you're not the only person who hasn't seen Star Wars. John Williams, the composer who made all the music for it, he mm-hmm. has not seen a completed film. See? I'm not the only one who doesn't see these. Here's the man that really, I mean, the acting in Star Wars is, eh, okay, story's, story's pretty good. But, I mean, I'll tell you what, the music, I, I, I think, is 80% of that movie. And here's the guy who made the music and made it what it is that everyone knows the theme when they hear it. And has he ever seen it? Nope. No. Nope. So but here's the thing, though. That. I do know the Star Wars theme. As a matter of fact, we had a dance party to the Star Wars theme song earlier this morning. Yeah, dun, we have dun, little dance dun, parties dun, when dun, I come. Dun, 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 there you go. So next time anyone ever gives you grief about not seeing or caring about Star Wars, be like, well, John Williams, he doesn't care either about Star Wars. Well, and you know, I think I'm going to have to go see it this weekend because... The boys are asking me to take them. Oh, that'd be a good ant thing to do. I know. We always do a special ant thing when I'm here. And so it's usually a movie or Chuck E. Cheese or going to McDonald's Playland. <laughs> Skip Chuck E. Cheese if you can. <laughs> I, you know, I don't mind Chuck E. Cheese. Actually, you know, my first job, I was Chuck E. Cheese. Were you really? Yes, I was actual Chuck E. Cheese. My In college, we went to Chuck E. Cheese. And I brag that I beat Chuck E. Cheese at air hockey. Did you really? And, and Chuck E. Cheese is like, he's unbeaten, he's unbeaten. I get up there, and we had a vicious fight, and I, I just, in the end, destroyed him. It was great. I'm like, <laughs> right here, baby. I was not a good Chuck E. Cheese. No? People said I did, and they kept giving me raises. But the thing is, is I'm so short that I hated it because these kids would come up and punch me. <laughs> and it would be because, like, I was seeing out of the mouth instead of the eyes, so I would get punched and it would be like in the worst places. Like I would just be bruised all over, like near my neck and, you know, our upper arms. And because they would think, you know, it was in the stomach or something. And that's just what kids would do. It wasn't like the older kids, but it was like the younger kids. It yeah. would just, because, you know, they get scared. So they just do their thing. Never thought about the By hazards the way, of a job, of, of, being a, of being a mascot. That's okay. Can we back up really quick to this yeah. Star Wars theme song? Oh, can yeah. you hear this? Hang on. Oh, that's awesome. Jen, Jen's in Hang the on. closet you hear and, him? and her nephew's outside. You Were you just singing Star Wars? Come here. Bring him in here. This is, this here. is Graham who's just outside dun, the, the dun, door. Dun, 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 Kid you, Darth Vader? Cooper's Cooper's five years old. Ooh, he, I can't believe you're shy now to talk into the microphone. You just talked for 20 minutes. Come on. He has Star Wars uh, pajama hey, top and bottoms on. Stormtrooper ones. Come here. Come here, buddy. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the headphones on him right. so you can ask him questions. Okay. This is this is Buckeye? Cooper. Yeah, Buckeyes. We're all Buckeye fans here. Hi, Cooper. How are you? Good. 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 Can you can you do uh, sound like Darth Vader? Wow. What about this? What does a lightsaber sound like when they start it up? And what does a lightsaber fight sounds like when two lightsabers are fighting with each other? What, what would it sound like? <laughs> How about Chewbacca? Sound like Chewbacca. Uh. Sound like Darth Vader again. Can you sound like R2-D2? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> You're awesome, Cooper. Have a Merry Christmas. You too. Hi, right, buddy. That's Cooper. I'll talk to your aunt again. Headphones on He's me? Like, I don't want to take headphones my headphones on me, off. Please. Microphone has the headphones on. Put them. Put the headphones on the microphone. All right. That's awesome. Thank you. What a cool kid. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. So there you have it. Now you know all the Star Wars sounds. <laughs> I do. I do. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad he was out there making those noises. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Star Wars in this house, man. It's insane. Well, my my kids, my son saw it on opening night. Um, he went there with, actually it was opening afternoon, he went there with uh, for a birthday party. So he left us all at home. So we have to, haven't seen it yet. So we're going to, I think over Christmas break here, go do that. We did an, a white elephant gift exchange. And Jen, you, are, you got jealous of the gift that we gave because we gave a squatty potty as I part of it. I have been asking... For this for two years, Jim. The squat, two years. The squatty potty is like a little stool that sits in front of your toilet that you put your feet on. It raises your your knees into a more natural position for your colon and allows easier elimination of body wastes. And we gave it away as as the joke. And you know what? 
Did they love it? It was the first one that was open, thank goodness. And everyone had a laugh on it. And people hadn't seen it before, so we had to explain to them what it was. It was it was one of the hottest items at the White Exchange. White Gift Elephant Exchange. Of course it would be. I don't know how people haven't seen this. First of all, the commercials for the Squatty Potty are absolutely hysterical with, with the unicorn and everything. With the cartoon unicorn pooping out rainbows and yes. uh, soft serve ice cream. Yes. Oh, my God. First of all, they're hysterical. But, you know, here's why I want it. I'm a short girl, like 5'2". So, I mean, my feet may sometimes still dangle. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> And that puts unnatural pressure on your colon and does not put you in a natural position for elimination. It's not even that I care so much about that. It's just that my leg falls asleep. (laughs) It's hard to make your muscles work right when your leg is asleep. And if your muscles aren't working right, mm, you're there for a long time. I mean, honestly, I would just like to feel like I'm normal size for something. Just something once in a while. Well, I'll I'll, I'll tell you. And and I I do want to tell you what we ended up with in the White Elephant Gift Exchange. But, you, you know... People laugh at the squatty potty, and other people like you are like excited about it. You just want it so you can mm-hmm. look like a normal person, right? It truly does. When you get in the natural position, it does make elimination so much more. Did you test this gift before you gave it away? No, but I've been camping without a toilet before or an outhouse. And first time we went camping out in Arizona with our friend Chrissy, she and uh, and her uh, boyfriend Paul took us out. Uh, we were near Sedona, but we were in the middle of nowhere. We we're on this hill. And I mean, we're we are camping in the desert. There's not like there's a there's a bathroom anywhere within ten miles of us. We had to take this dirt road to this hill, and it's nighttime when we get there. And they're like, "Oh, the Red Rocks of Sedona are beautiful." And by the way, you know, if you have to go to the bathroom, here's a little shovel. You go dig a little hole, and here's a roll of toilet paper, and do your stuff in the hole and cover it up. I'm like, okay, well, it's kind of awkward if you've never gone out and squatted. For number right. two, I mean, there's one thing to hit a tree. I can hit a tree from 20 yards away. We're good with that. But when you actually mm-hmm. have to, to do number two, they explain how you do it. You put your feet down, and then you sort of you, you squat down. You know, so, mm-hmm. so the back of your top legs are hitting the bottoms of your the backs of your bottom legs, and you let your rear end hang. I mean, that's how it works, right? right. So, so the next morning, I, I wake up early before anyone else because I want to get out there without any kind of distraction or feel any nerves. <laughs> You know when you're on vacation, the nerves. Yes. So yes. not only do I have nerves, but now I have nerves and no no toilet to use, no no throne to sit on, and so I go out and I'm I'm facing I'm facing west, so the sun's going to come up behind me, and I still haven't seen the red rocks of Sedona, and uh, about five miles away is a whole ridge, a whole uh, mountain, I guess you'd call it, of the red rocks, but I can't see it because mm-hmm. it's dark. So I'm sitting there in my position, waiting, nothing, nothing, and I'm tense. Nothing's happening. Time ticks by. The sun begins to come up. And as the sun comes up, it bursts behind me. And its light illuminates the red rocks of Sedona. And they become red. And all of a sudden, my mind switches from focusing on what I'm trying to do to that. My body relaxes and voila, happens. And I was like, oh, that was easy. That was so, and it it, it happens quicker. You don't have to sit there for Mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes. It happens quicker. And so we have since named that. The poo with a view. Poo with a view. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's true, and you know what? So, I, so when I heard about the squatty potty, I thought back to the poo with a view, and I went, "Yeah, when you get your legs in the right position, it works wonders." So, if I could endorse the squatty potty and the unicorn and his rainbows that shoot out of his rear end, I well full heartedly to endorse it. I always tell people in my family, you know, especially the boys, I'm like, girls don't poo. We just have rainbows and unicorns and butterflies that come out and sometimes glitter when we fart. It's just the way it is. <laughs> so that commercial really resonates with me. <laughs> because that's everything that's in it. And if, if you, you know, if, if you've never seen it, you have to just look it up on YouTube. What the, the, the potty came from Shark Tank. One of those it shows. Did come from Shark yeah. Tank. Yeah, so that's, that's it's, it's brilliant. I'm just waiting for my brilliant Shark Tank ideas. So <laughs> well, so the white elephant gift that was the first one that was opened up and it was stolen. The third gift, uh, the second gift that was opened up was this was this uh, uh, hoodie sweatshirt that had a massive cat of million bright colors on it and big green eyes that are probably like oh I don't know about an inch an inch and a half in diameter so big green eyes and a cat's head that fit it and that was the second one and the couple that opened up were like ooh this is cool they like cats and the mom's pregnant too so she was really emotional about this cat sweatshirt she thought was cool and I wow. thought I thought to myself because we were the third ones to open up gifts 
I want that cat sweatshirt because she thinks it's so cool. You got to have someone who steals, right? Someone to be the jerk. So I right. Was, Absolutely. I was, I was the jerk to the pregnant woman. So I stole the cat sweatshirt. So we got the cat sweatshirt. It ended up getting stolen from us. Someone else thought it was a cool idea. And it gets to the end and we got ours stolen again, whatever we had at that point. And I looked at my wife, Tracy. I said, Tracy, we either get the cat sweatshirt or, or we can go for the mounted squirrel's head. The mounted squirrel's head? What? Someone had, had shot a squirrel and <laughs> mounted the squirrel onto a onto a piece of wood and you put it on your wall and you can have your, you know, you got a deer or a moose or a fish. Right, this, right. This is a squirrel head and he's sticking out all proud from this piece <sighs> of wood. I said, I want, oh my gosh. I want the squirrel head. Am I, yeah, no, I would not want that one. You wouldn't. That's want the not the head? one I would want. He was soft. I said, let me let me pet him. I want to pet him. So you pet him. Have you ever petted a squirrel before? No. You no, should. you're not supposed to. Well, it was, this one was dead. You're it was not okay. Supposed to. It was dead. It was okay. So and they're soft little suckers. And I thought that would be so cool. I thought I know exactly where I want to put it in my office. It would go. It would actually go right here next to me, right next to my uh, Children's Miracle Network poster and my uh, my medals from running some five Ks. I'd have my squirrel head, and it would be that conversation piece. And so I I let my wife do the choice. I said, hun. We can either go for the squirrel head or we can go for the cat sweatshirt. And I'm like, come on, come on. She ended up going for this cat sweatshirt. So we have a cat sweatshirt now. Eternally the ugliest sweatshirt ever. And that's your next white elephant gift. No, because I got home, my daughter fell in love with it. And she has worn it nonstop since our Are you last serious? Week. Oh, she loves the thing. <laughs> she loves it. They had uh, they had to go bowling. Oh, they had to. They went bowling uh, on, on Thursday, their last day of school. And so mm -hmm. they could wear whatever they wanted. And so she wore her, her cat sweatshirt. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Love. Yeah, I'm it. trying to think my favorite white elephant gift that I've ever gotten, or actually, I didn't even get it, but I wanted it. There's been two. It's this thing that goes over your head so you can sleep, like in an airplane or in an office. And it's this big, bushy white thing, and then your arms go in it. So it's like total, complete darkness. I don't even know what they call it. Ooh, I like that. But it's this, yeah. And I was like, that would be perfect for flights or just. You know, sometimes at the office, after getting up so early, you need a quick 20-minute nap. <laughs> you like, become a mummy. <laughs> yes, yes. So I wanted that, and that was a big hit. And then we had the other gift that was a hit that I also did not win was a sweatshirt, and it had a pouch to carry your dog in it. <laughs> what? Yes. It was like, so I have miniature dachshunds. So it would fit in there. So it's, it was a pouch to carry your dog. You just drop like your dog in the pouch. 20 pounds. Yeah. This would be perfect. We've got a 14-year-old baby girl, like little miniature dachshund, and it's getting hard for her to go on walks, and she still wants to go to the park. So after like 10 minutes, I have to carry her, and the others are still wanting to go. So this would be perfect for her. She's 12 pounds. I could just sit her in the pouch and both leashes and keep going. Brilliant. You're like a, you're like a walking kangaroo. Yes. Yes. And I did not get that one either. I'm I kept sorry. hoping I would. You could make I one know. for yourself, a little bit of thread and a little piece of fabric and sew it on anything. I I feel like if I were to buy it, it would be sturdier. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. I you're, think maybe it would be. You're not going to get one. Or, probably not. <laughs> look, if it would make it there in time, I'd send you one. Well, I mean, there is Amazon overnight shipping. No. I, <laughs> but I, I, I prefer you ship me the Squatty Potty. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had to return the Squatty Potty and get a second one because the first one was broken. I, maybe <gasps> some, I think someone had taken it home and used it. Oh, no. And it got maybe. cracked, so they brought it back. Let me tell you, if you and I had exchanged gifts and you had given me the squatty potty, I would have been jumping up and down for joy. I would have been doing my happy dance. You would have been laughing hysterically. So I'm good at giving gifts, and I would have known exactly what you wanted. You want to be yeah. a normal person. I do. A normal person. <laughs> well, a normal person wearing a princess crown and being treated like a queen. But other than that, totally a normal person. Totally normal average. <laughs> average every day. All right. Well, I, I, I have a couple would you rathers. I saw these, okay. and I thought, these are cool. They're Christmas related. Since Christmas is coming up, would you rather? And I have not shared these with you yet on purpose. Because I want to get your honest, here we go, opinion. I've tried not to think about it either, so I would be okay. able to go, okay, this is what I want. So, would you rather, Christmas themed, would you rather, Jen, get a ton of paper cuts while opening each present, or would you rather watch as someone else unwrapped presents really, really, really slowly? Uh, paper cuts, hands down. My brother and his family unwrap their gifts really slowly. It's going to be like a four-hour ordeal Christmas morning, and I don't have patience for that. Like, I'm already napping when they're halfway through. Do you do you wait until the first per one person's unwrapped the present and go to the next one? Or does everyone yes, open it at once? No, one person, but they're going to have a lot more gifts than we do because they've got the in-laws gifts and aunts and uncles on their side, on I her always, side and stuff. I always want to reach over and help them unwrap because I would go the same thing. I just take the, the paper cuts over watching. I just want to reach over and I'm like, let me... 
help hurry you with, up help you with that all right would you rather jen yeah. get only boring but practical presents or get only hilarious but useless gag gifts how boring and practical that's the key thing like if it's a vacuum the if it's a vacuum the boring. useless gifts if boring and practical is you need new gloves and you need new sweaters, then I it depends on how boring and practical You have practical no choice. Your, your choice today is you're only going to get boring <sighs> but practical or hilarious but useless gag gifts. Three? Boring and practical. Two? Boring and practical. You, you don't want to do that. I can't believe I said that. I've I seen, know. And that's what I'm going for because I'm like, you know what? I, if gag gifts, I'll look at them and go, they're cute. And quite honestly, anything I get like that within three days is in the trash. Out the door. Boom. Gone. Or I give it to Salvation Army. Take the tax right off for it. Oh, I saved that for my white elephant gifts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're actually the same one so far. Would you rather, Jen, uh, Christmas edition, would you rather make the most beautiful gingerbread house or make the tastiest gingerbread house? Ch tastiest, hand down. Why? Tastiest. Because yeah. no one eats it. Well, if you know it's tasty, wouldn't you eat it? Yeah, but after you spend all this, see, I'll take the other one. I'll, I'll make the most beautiful because once you make it, everyone's like, oh, look at that. It's beautiful. And you don't want people to eat it when they come over. Because they'll destroy the beautiful artwork that you've done. Yeah, no, see, if it doesn't look beautiful and you know it's really good, you can put a little sign saying, please eat, I'm super tasty, and then everybody wins. All right, would you rather, Christmas edition, would you rather go caroling every day until you lose your voice, or would you rather have carolers serenade your house three times a day, all month long? Go caroling every day. Until you lose the voice. Because <laughs> yes. you, you have to open the door and be like, hi. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, God. and you know what? I used to have caroling parties growing up. Really? So we used, to, yeah, yeah, growing up I would have, and it would be about 20 or 30 of us, and my friends loved it. Every, all the kids we went to school with, they loved it. They'd come over, we'd have hot chocolate, we'd practice singing Christmas carols, we'd go throughout the neighborhood. It was fabulous. And then, since I was here, I had somebody uh, send me a video because they were caroling in my neighborhood. They're like, are you guys home? Because you're not opening up your door for the carolers. And I'm like, eh, we're all in Minneapolis. But go ahead and carol the house anyways, it's okay. Yeah, I go for it. I mean, maybe neighbors will come out and look. I would just open but the door. But it was always fun. They open the door and they can't sing and they're not that good. And you're like, oh, this is great. Oh, they have one more. Oh, great. Oh, come oh, on. It's fun, though. Boy. It's oh, fun. You have to applaud. And then there's that one person who thinks they can sing and they really can't sing, but they're loud. And But that's why you have like a big group of carolers. Mm, that's why I want to go caroling every day until I lose my voice. And I don't yeah. like caroling. I don't like doing it. It's mm. Why? I just Because I can't sing, first of all. And I don't know the words of the songs, and it's just I have no rhythm, I have no melody to it, and so it's. But I do that over having to listen to someone like me come to the door. I'm the one. That, I'm the one I'm scared of. I'm the. I'm scared of me coming to the door and me having to listen to them three me three times a day. You must have a really bad voice. My voice is pretty good. It's horrible. So you say. My voice is really good. Would you like for me to practice no, right not, now? Not at all. Okay, go ahead. Are you sure? Okay, sing. Um, is... Sing. Uh... One, I know the words too, Jim. Uh. <laughs> 12 days of Christmas up through the third day. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. I really don't know this song, so we're going to make it up. How can you not know the 12 days <laughs> of we Christmas? Were <laughs> How can you not know the very first one? Hang on. Oh, is it partridge in a pear tree? It is a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, hang on. <laughs> on the first day of first Christmas, day of Christmas my, true my true love gave to me, me a, part a partridge in a pear tree. See, oh, we should sing it together. On the first day of Christmas, of Christmas, my Christmas true, true love gave to me a partridge, <laughs> a partridge in, a pear, in a pear tree. We could go caroling right there. Yeah, see, that I don't want me showing up at my door three times a day doing that. Don't that's, you think I sounded good? That's You sounded fantastic, but you don't know the worst of the song. So <laughs> I'm out. You're done. <laughs> no one wants you showing up and no one wants me showing up. However, Darn. they went, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make some people hate you until you lose your voice. So sing. Really I would loud totally do that until you lose your voice. All right, all right. So you ready for Christmas? Uh yes and no. I have some gifts to wrap because you can't put gap, put wrapped gifts in your luggage anymore. Oh, I so I still have to wrap that. gifts. Okay. All right. But yes, okay. they're here. They're all here, ready to wrap. Yes. All right. I've got. Uh, I actually before we did this this morning, I ran downstairs and I got five of them wrapped. I think I have two more, and I'm done wrapping. Oh, and we're making uh, Christmas cutout cookies this evening. Oh, yeah, we did that. Yes. Yes, we did that. And then we, we, my wife made them about three weeks ago and then froze them and then took them out and thought them, and then we put the, the frosting on. And then she put them in the garage because there's more room there, and the garage is, is cool, cold, actually. <laughs> so the morning that it was minus three, I'm warming my car up, and the exhaust from my car is just, I mean, it's still just the white cloud after 15 right. minutes. It's that cold. 
And my wife's like, boy, it's cold out here. I'm like, yeah. And all the exhaust is sitting in the garage. It's probably flavored all the cookies. Well, we have some Christmas cutout cookies with the exhaust flavor on. Going Ew. Through. I know. Oh, gross. We'll make yeah, sure, you need to remake those. We'll make sure we give those to friends that we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I know the boys are looking forward to the Christmas cutout cookies. Oh, my son just... Yes, this is one of their favorites. Stands above them and just shovels them in the mouth. Yes. Well, and they like rolling it out and using the cookie cutters and decorating. I mean, think about it. For a five and two-year-old, this is like heaven, right? Think about it. For someone my age, this is cool. I personally just like the dough. That's what I care about. I Uh, eat raw dough all the time. I'm still the whipper guy, licking on the whippers, licking on the little spatula thing, and I clean out the bowl every time. So much I get a stomach ache, and then I'm like, why did I do that? Well, pass the eggnog. We were just doing that when we made chocolate chip cookies, and my mom was like, you shouldn't be eating raw dough. This is how much I care about the warnings. As I'm licking a beater and popping in more raw dough, I'm like, ah, well, I see it's a win-win situation. When I'm eating good now, and two, if I do get sick, I'll lose a few pounds. <laughs> Pop in another bite of dough. Exactly. Win-win situation. Live dangerously. <laughs> You've gotten taken care of. I like that. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, Jen, you have a merry, merry, merry Christmas. Thank you, Jim. You too. On the fifth day of Christmas, Christmas my true my love, true gave, love to gave to me. Come on. What is it? Golden rings. It's the fifth day of Christmas. Five, Five golden, golden rings. Rings, right. egg, geese, ducks. You're horrible. Mary made the milking. <laughs> Have a great Christmas. Thank you. Take you care. too. <laughs>